Next, we're going to solve a coin problem. And with all coin problems, you have to pay attention to the types of coins, how many of them you have, the value of each one, and then the total value of the coins. Let me show you what I mean. Here's our problem. Nancy has 26 coins in her pocket. The coins are either dimes or quarters, and they're worth $3.65. How many dimes and how many quarters does she have? So there's 26 coins, so the total number of coins is 26. 26. The total value of all those coins is $3.65. Now, the two coins are dimes and quarters, so each dime is worth $0.10, cents, each quarter is worth $0.25. Cents. So there's a lot of information in this problem, and I think by setting up a table like this, a table like either one of these right here, um, really helps us organize the work. So let's go and look at this first table. So what I have here is dimes and quarters, okay? And I'm first going to fill in the number of each one that I have. Well, I don't know how many of each one I have. That's what I'm trying to find out. So I'm going to say, let's let X be equal to the number of dimes. Since there's 26 coins altogether and X of them are dimes, the difference between 26 and X is going to be the number of quarters. So 26 minus X is the number of quarters. So the dimes plus the quarters have to add up to 26. So if I start by saying, let's let x equal the number of dimes, then the number of quarters is 26 minus x. So for instance, if we end up finding out that she has 10 dimes, then she's going to have 26 minus 10, or 16 quarters. That makes sense. x plus 26 minus x adds up to 26, the total number of coins. Now, each of these coins has a certain value. So I'm going to fill that in, just the value of each individual coin. Every dime is worth 10 cents, and every quarter is worth 25 cents. So I'm writing my value for these things in terms of cents. So the total number, uh, the total value that we have in dimes is going to be 10 cents times the number of dimes we have. The total amount of money we have in quarters is 25 cents times the total number of quarters we have. 26 minus x. So total value of the x dimes is 10 cents times the number of dimes. Total value of the quarters is 25 cents times the number of quarters. Okay, so together these two things will will allow us to um, write an equation that uh, describes the situation. Let's do the same table again, but but work with two variables instead of one. So here I have my same table, and I'm going to say let's let x be the number of dimes. And let's let y be the number of quarters. So now I have uh, two variables I'm going to work with right here instead of just one. x dimes, y quarters. What are their values? Well, a dime is still worth 10 cents, and a quarter is still worth 25 cents. So I have the same numbers right here for their values. And then the total value of all the x dimes is going to be 10 cents times the number of dimes. So 10x and the total value of the quarters is going to be 25 y. So when I use two variables like this, x and y, I end up with a system of equations to solve. When I use just one variable, like I did in this table, I'm going to end up with just one equation to solve. So let's go back to our first table and read the problem again. The total amount of money that she has in dimes and quarters is $3.65. Okay, that's going to be the total amount she has in dimes plus the total amount she has in quarters. So 10 times x plus 25 times 26 minus x must be equal to 365. Now, I'm writing this as 365 because I've got the value of my coins in terms of cents, 10 cents and 25 cents, so I want to give their total value in terms of cents also. $3.65 $3.65 is the same as 365 cents. So here's my equation. I can solve it. 10x plus 25 times 26 is going to end up to be, I multiplied this out on the calculator, got 650. 25 times x is 25x, and that's equal to 365. 10x subtract 25x is minus 15x plus 650 is equal to 365. Now I'll add negative 650 to each side, 
and I'll have negative 15x is equal to 365 subtract 650 comes out to be negative 285. Divide both sides by negative 15, and I end up with x is equal to 19. I did that on the calculator, too. 285 divided by 15 comes out to be 19. So, according to the words in my problem right here, I have this for the solution. She has 19 dimes and... 26 minus 19, which is 7 quarters. Okay, and 19 dimes, 19 dimes are each worth 10 cents, so 19 times 10 is $1.90 in dimes. Each of the 7 quarters is worth 25 cents, so 7 times um, 25 is going to be, what, $1.75? $1.75 plus $1.90, that's going to come out to be $3.65. So, and then 19 plus 7 is equal to 26. So all that checks with the original words of the problem. Let's see what it looks like now when we use a system of equations to solve it. I'll go over to this table that I have. So in this table, I have x dimes, y quarters, each worth 10 cents and 25 cents for a total value of 10x for the value of the dimes and 25y for the value of the quarters. So when I look at the number of coins I have, x and y, I know that the total is 26. So x plus y is equal to 26. That gives me one equation involving the variables x and y. The total value is 10x plus 25y is 365. So when I use a system of equations, my table fills in a little simpler, but I end up with two equations that I have to solve simultaneously. And if you haven't done any work with systems of equations, you don't know what to do next. Um, but at least when I have this system of equations, I can, if I, if I know how to solve a system of equations, I can do it, and I'll get the same solutions I did over here. Let's see what happens if I solve this equation for y. y is equal to 26 minus x. And then I'll take that value of y, substitute it back into this equation, and I get 10x plus 25 times 26 minus x equals 365. And so when I solve this system of equations right here by the substitution method, I end up with this equation right here, which matches the equation that I had over here when I solved it with just a linear equation. So I know from there on I'm going to get the same solutions that I got over here. Okay, we're not going to solve all of the problems here that involve coins with both methods. I just wanted to show them both methods to you at the same time. So depending on where you are in your algebra class, whether you've just solved linear equations, you can use this method. Sometimes you find the coin problems over in the systems of equations chapter, then you can use this method right here. So after this, we're going to solve some of the problems with just a linear equation right here and some of the problems using a system of equations. But all the coin problems, whether we use a system or whether we just use one equation, all set up the same way with these tables that involve the number of each coin we have, the value of the individual coins, and then the total value of all the coins that we have together.